Hello, my name is Sharon Ellswick. I am owner and operator of the Holiday House Bed and Breakfast in Orange, Virginia. We're on Main Street but nestled within the rolling hills of Central Virginia Wine Country. Today we'll be talking about making the Holiday Family Buttermilk Biscuits. It's a big guest favorite here. You can find the recipe on our blog, on B&B Finder. It's also been picked up on cooking.com and hgtv.com. And you can always contact me with any questions. So we'll go ahead and get started. What I've done is in this bowl and in my sifter, I've placed all the dry ingredients. That includes the flour, the sugar, the baking powder, the baking soda, the salt, and the cream of tartar. And I'm gonna go ahead and sift that through. And that makes sure that the flour is nice and fluffy and there's no lumps in your flour. Alright, so once you have that sifted in your bowl, you're going to take your cut up butter. Make sure your butter is nice and cold because what that does during the baking process is it, ma it makes sure that when the biscuits start to bake at that high temperature, the cold butter creates air pockets that makes it nice and fluffy. Go ahead and stir that butter into the flour. And now we're going to cut the butter into the flour. Cut your butter and flour incorporated. We're going to go ahead and start prepping this for your buttermilk. Now, if you want to make this just one time and you don't have buttermilk, another way to create buttermilk out of regular milk is to add some vinegar or lemon juice, just a little, to your milk and that will create a buttermilk-like product that you can use in these buttermilk biscuits. Go ahead and add the wet ingredients to a well that you create in your bowl. And then go ahead and gently incorporate the flour and the buttermilk. And what you're looking for is for all the flour to basically get wet. Depending on the weather, this will either become an excessively sticky batter or one that looks kind of like this, where it's wet and when pressed gets stick to get sticky and sticks together. That's good enough. Now we're going to flour the board. I use the same flour to flour the board that I use in the biscuits. It's an all-purpose flour and it's unbleached. You don't have to use unbleached, but that's my preference. I'm going to go ahead and create a bed of flour and turn out your biscuit dough onto your board. start shaping my biscuit dough for rolling. I like a rectangular shape. This is where you get to dirty your hands a little bit. Your dough is not going to feel like it's coming together in the beginning, but it will by the end of rolling this a good number of times. I use a rolling pin that actually is my husband's grandmother's rolling pin. Flour it start rolling. And as you can see, it might stick a little bit. You can just pat a little bit of flour there. Just keep rolling it out. And then I use my bench scraper, which is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen. And I fold this mess on over. And believe it or not, this will come together after you're finished rolling and twisting this around. So you'll fold this in half, put a little extra flour on your board, and then twist your dough around. Once again, shape it into a rectangle. And then get started for another roll. This is about my eighth turn of dough, and I'm really liking the texture and the way that it's all coming together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one more. One 
one more spin of the dough. There we go. And just roll this out for the ninth time into a nice rectangle. Something easy to work with. I also don't want to roll it too, too thin because a little bit of a thicker biscuit dough equals a little bit of a taller biscuit. So go ahead, we're going to start cutting. Go ahead and flour whatever your cutter is. Mine is actually a tomato paste can and I loved the uh, size of it. It works perfectly for the dish that this accompanies at the end. You're going to go ahead and flour that and then you are not going to press and twist because what you do by doing that is you're sealing the top and bottom part of the dough and it prohibits the biscuit from actually fluffing up and rising. You're going to press straight down and cut out your biscuits. I'm just going to do four right now as an example. And there's two things that you can do with these biscuits at this point. You can bake them and a lot of people swear by actually turning your biscuit over as a little bit of a secret to giving it a little bit more of a rise. So you can experiment with that. So you can do that. Or at this point, you can line a baking sheet with some parchment paper. And place your biscuits all in a nice row and freeze them at this point. And once they're frozen, about 10 hours or so in the freezer, you'll be able to tell. You can put them all into a Ziploc or an airtight container and then take them out one by one and bake them according to the regular instructions. Uh, and that way you can kind of pre-prep the night before, up to about a week before, um, and make it up your morning very easy in that regard. Now we're going to put the biscuits on the pan and then take some melted butter and brush the tops generously with them. And we are going to bake them for about 11 minutes, give or take a few, either way in a 400 or 425 oven. Uh, just depends on your oven. I use 400 for about 12 minutes or so. We'll see when they come out. You can see that they've got a really nice golden brown on top and a really nice slightly darker golden brown on the bottom. These guys are done. When you open them up you can see just how flaky and fantastic they are. Ooh, a little hot. Lots of fun layers. At the end we accompany these biscuits with an eggy dish and for the biscuits we offer our guests some locally made jams, some local jellies, some apple or peach butters, all made locally, some honey. It just depends what is popular in your region. Um, and they are absolutely fantastic just by themselves as well. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you at the Holiday House Bed and Breakfast soon.